Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new video. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing that right there, first time home buyers tips and tricks, discussing everything you need to know if you're getting ready to purchase your first home. Let's get into the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into the video, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Raymond Riley Jr. and I am a real estate broker and realtor here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I work with buyers and sellers alike that are looking to purchase or sell a piece of real estate here, whether that's a residential or commercial. Uh, but nonetheless, feel free to hit that subscribe button right there. Yeah, there you go, boom, boom, boom. Hit that subscribe button so you can become a part of my YouTube family. And also feel free to reach out to me. Information is coming on the screen as well. But feel free to reach out to me if you have any real estate concerns as it relates to buying and selling right here in the Atlanta metropolitan area. Also, I do work with buyers or I can point you in the right direction when it comes to other markets uh, like Savannah, Columbus, Macon, and Augusta. So feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in those markets as well. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video discussing the home buying tips and tricks, first time home buying tips and tricks. So if you are thinking about purchasing your first home, this video is for you first time home buyers you know just check it out exactly how you need and what you need to do to qualify for a mortgage this video is for you as well so let's go ahead and jump into it now let me also say this before we get deeper um, this video will be a part of a video series for first time home buyers tips and tricks that can be found in the new playlist on the channel uh, titled just that first time home buyer tips and tricks uh, this is the first installment of these type of videos. So more of these are coming and the reason they're coming is because in the comment section I am listening to you guys. I've seen a consistent question about you know uh, how do you qualify for a mortgage? How much money do you need to put down? All of these things are fundamental, especially if you're thinking about actually having a transaction for yourself. Um, I, I don't primarily focus on first time home buyers, uh, but I do work with first time home buyers. So I, I, I'm not niche down in that respect. Um, so, but for you guys that are on the channel and you are subscribers, I do wanna make sure that you have information from me that can help you in your search uh, and starting that journey of your first time home buying. So I, I don't want you to only get the information about suburbs and different sub, uh, subdivisions and what's going on in the real estate market without understanding the qualifications and what you need to do to qualify to purchase the home of your dream. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. So now here is my, I guess, the foundation, right? I'm gonna give you the eight steps in my, well really it's seven steps for you but it's eight for me as a realtor because I have a quality control at the end. But there are seven steps in the real estate home buying process in my opinion. Uh, I'm gonna be looking at my notes just to make sure I give it to you right. The first one is gonna be your consultation. You have to have a real estate consultation, okay? That is your baseline, that is, you know, nothing happens before you have a consultation in most cases. If you're doing it, you know, if, if, if you're doing it in my opinion the right way. Now, uh, there are some nuances that can change that, like, you know, obtaining financing first, then talking to a realtor, that's okay. But if you're doing it the way I'm telling you to do it, if you have not started anything yet, then do it this way. I believe it'll make your process a lot smoother moving forward. So the first thing you wanna do, step one, is have a real estate consultation, whether with myself or another realtor that you're looking to hire. Um, and I would say interview multiple real estate agents um, that you want to work with you on the buying side because what's most important in my opinion is that you find the right fit. You find the person that fits with your temperament, your personality, um, and so that way you can have a smooth transaction. Uh, I think working with me, um, I believe I can work with everyone, but I don't think that everyone can work with me, if that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> Let, let me digress here. Let me clean that up. So what I mean by that is I feel that I can adjust and adapt, but there are certain things that I can't adjust and adapt on. Like, you know, the, the, the real estate transaction flow. Um, I do this for a living. I know the proper way that this transaction needs to go. I am here to guide you. So what I am not is I am not a type of realtor that you can pretty much recreate the wheel for me and tell me that, or, or tell me how you want me to do my job, right? Uh, there are some realtors that are 
a little bit greener, they're finding out their approach, and they're a little bit more flexible in the way they do their business. For me, I am very much so like, hey, this is the proper way to do it. Um, but I do leave room to adjust and adapt for each individual, each individual personality. Um, so, but nonetheless, you want to use that consultation to balance that and to understand and assess that as, as much as you can in such short amount of time, right? You want to see, can I work with this person? Do they connect with my expectations of a realtor or my expectations for the transaction? Do I, am I able to talk with them? Are they a good listener, etc. right? So you wanna assess where you are on that spectrum. And also in turn, that realtor should be in, uh, assessing you. They should be determining if they are a right fit for you. They should be determining uh, what your level of knowledge is as it relates to the real estate transaction so that they can set up things to kind of get you over that learning curve or give you resources to teach you a little bit more about what's going to be happening in that transaction. So uh, it's an equitable uh, time that you're spending with each other to ascertain, can we work together, right? That's important. And also it's goal setting in that consultation. We're setting goals. We're giving you the benchmarks that you need to hit if you have not already met them. Um, so you can understand the flow of this overall transaction. So it is so important that you set that foundation first. Step number two in the real estate home buying process is going to be obtaining your financing. Okay. Obtain financing is number two, right after the consultation. Most real estate professionals should have a lender that they can send you uh, a referral, if you will, that they have built a rapport with and that they understand, um, what the expectations are and that they're setting you up to succeed. Okay. Uh, obtaining financing is the very first thing you do after you talk with the realtor and select the realtor that you want or real estate agent or real estate broker that you number want three. to work with. All right. So step number three is where you begin your home search, right? So you've identified your realtor, you've obtained your financing. Now it's time to actually search for the home. So as you can see, we didn't start searching for homes first. Very, very important. Step three is where you search for your home. That's where you start to implement a lot of that conversation about what you're looking for, your wants and needs, and your realtor is starting to connect those dots for you. All right. Uh, me personally, I do another call before we start home searching. I call it my discovery call. And on that discovery call, we're just kind of cleaning up from the consultation to now we're pre-qualified, did that budget change, right? We're going to talk about in the consultation what you think your budget is going to be, but we're going to clean that up in our discovery call, right? So we're, you know, this is where I thought I was going to be. This is where you are. Now with where you are, this is where our options are, right? Um, so that's what we do on that discovery call. And we're also looking at, is that expectation uh, in alignment, right? Can we find what you want? Um, is it a needle in a haystack type situation where um, it's, it's, it's not going to be wide ranging, uh, as it relates to the amount of options, right? Because there are certain criteria that you can come up with that are not the status quo. They are a little bit more nuanced and unique um, to where you may not have a lot of options. So we want to try to identify that before we start that home search so we can shift expectations, we can set up our strategy on how we're going to tackle that if that is the actual concern. Step number four in the real estate transaction is when you're going to uh, go into contract negotiation. So we started searching for a home and now we're actually negotiating contracts. I think this is where it really gets real for most buyers because now you're actually saying to yourself, hey, I want to buy this house. Let's go ahead and put forth the paperwork to actually buy the house. Let's start negotiating with the seller. This is the fun part for me as your realtor because this is where I actually get to do my real job. I do say real job and I mean that because Real estate right now in, in 2022, you know, you can search for your own home, right? I mean, it, it unless you're just really, one more, don't have the time to do it and you really want to allow that realtor to do their job, right? Of finding the home for you and understanding and listening to what you want. Uh, beyond that, we have similar data, right? Uh, that's what I always tell my clients. You have about 99% of the same data that I have as it relates to what's available. Now, what you do with that data is different, right? Because as a realtor, I know how to, you know, scrub the data. I know what to look for in the data, etc. But as at, at face value, as it relates to finding that house, you have the same infrastructure that I have to find it, right? 
So contract negotiations is where you definitely want to make sure you hire the right realtor because that's going to make or break the difference between you being successful and you being unsuccessful in your real estate transaction. All right, so moving right along to step five, which is going to be post acceptance and due diligence period. Uh, this is where basically now you're under contract. So in essence, you have bought a home contingent upon you being able to close that transaction, but you now have a controlling interest in a property by way of a purchase and sale agreement. Okay. So that's very important. Now within this period of time, this is where you're going to actually do your due diligence. This is where you're going to do your research, if you will, right? You're going to research the neighborhood a little bit deeper. Now, of course, we've already done a lot of that work to get to that point. You should have, <laughs> we would have done a lot of legwork as it relates to this house before we're in this period. But this is the period where you have a, a actual carved out period of time in your transaction to do this. So we're looking at making sure the neighborhood is good, you know, driving back through that neighborhood if, if you're local, right? If you're not relocating. Um, you know, scrubbing the data on the neighborhood if, you know, even if you are local, city-data.com. City hyphen, is that di hyphen or dash? Hyphen dash, same thing, dot com. It should be flashing on the screen now. So that website is gonna be your best friend to scrub data, to look at the deeper dive statistically in that area, if that is a concern to you, right? So that is where you're gonna be doing that. Also, we're gonna be looking at our home, we're gonna be scheduling our home inspection. Uh, any qualified or any you know working realtor or real estate agent or real estate broker should be able to give you a list of recommended inspectors or point you in the right direction as it relates to searching for those inspectors. I do that for my clients. As soon as you go on the contract, you're gonna get an email from me say home inspection. It's gonna have a uh, actual hyperlink from the American uh, Association of Home Inspectors, ASHI, uh, if you will. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in a zip code and it's gonna populate over 50, 75, between 50 to 75 home inspectors. I'm gonna send you that hyperlink and then below that, I'm gonna tell you which company I have had a lot of success with working with. A lot of, uh, of my clients have cho chosen to work with that inspector. So it's, it will be your choice but I give you that framework. So you don't have to do any guessing. Uh, most of the time when you're working with a real estate professional that is constantly working in the business, the, the process should be easy. You should never have to guess through a real estate transaction. You should never have to um, feel that you are doing the things that you don't know how to do. That is why you're hiring a realtor to do those items, okay, or, or tackle those things for you or give you advice on those things. So that is pretty much step five in the real estate transaction, uh, post acceptance, due diligence. Now moving on to step number six, which is going to be title search and appraisal. So in this period of time, you have, you know, uh, got the home under contract, you've gotten your home inspection. Uh, we have renegotiated the contract if we need to, meaning if there were repair issues that came up on the due diligence report or on the inspection report, uh, we've gotten over that. Now we have instructed the closing attorney, go ahead and scrub that title, um, make sure that there's no liens on the property and the lender has already played or has or will at that you know, notification that the due diligence period is over. So basically we would instruct them to go ahead and order the appraisal uh, and that appraisal will be ordered. And in this period of time, we are waiting for that appraisal to come back, the appraisal report. The appraisal report is where we ascertain value, where we, where we the, the value is determined for the home, right? Uh, that person to determine the value of the home is called a appraiser. The appraiser uh, completes a report that pulls comparable sold properties, sold properties, okay, uh, within a geographical radius, one mile, five miles, somewhere in there, uh, of homes that are comparable, age, square footage, bedroom count, uh, and they have derived on a figure. And that figure says, based on these homes, this house is worth X, okay? So within this period of step six, that's where we're gonna get that value back and we're gonna determine, that's gonna determine if we move forward or if we have to renegotiate the contract again or we need to dissolve the contract. Those are the three options that can happen in this period. We're gonna go deeper in this section, uh, this segment as well on the actual each step, you know, 
a little deeper. I'm just giving you the framework. If you're liking the video so far, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, become a part of the YouTube family. Now moving on to step seven. At this point, this is clear to close and closing day. So we have to get what we call a clear to close from your lender. At that point, the valuation would have come back in step six. The valuation in order to get to step seven has to be positive or the contract has to be re-ratified to overcome any deficiencies. So deficiency would mean if we're under contract at $400,000 and the appraisal came back at $375,000, that is a deficiency of $25,000. Now, how we deal with that deficiency there are a few options, right? Uh, which we're gonna get deeper in on more videos to come. But small, but the root of it is we have to deal with that $25,000 in order to get to step number seven. So at this point, we're in step number seven, which is the happy day. This is the day that we show up at our closing attorney's office and we sign, or you sign, all of your documents to purchase that home, all right? That period or that process could take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Just depends on how fast you wanna to agree to the documents. Here's what I tell all of my clients that are going into closing uh, the few days before, once we complete our final walkthrough, um, in which I skipped that part a little bit. So what we do is we do our final inspection and then we get our clear to close. Sometimes that happens same day. Sometimes it's staggered. It, it just depends. And then we show up on closing day. So always, always, always we do a final walkthrough just to make sure that the property, number one, is still standing. Number two, there's no new issues that have come up between, uh, you know, the time we was last there until now, et cetera. So uh, within or on that walkthrough, I always tell my clients, hey, the documents aren't going to change, right? they're not going to change. You're not going to negotiate with the lender at the table in the closing attorney's office. So it's a matter of, do you want to buy the house or do you not? Here's what you look for. Make sure the interest rate is still good. Make sure the purchase price matches with the purchase price of the contract that you signed and make sure uh, that it is the term that you're looking for, right? So make sure it's a 30 year fix if that's what you agreed to. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. That's, that's, that's it. The mortgage note, uh, is going to be the fact that, hey, that's the security for the loan. In the state of Georgia, we Georgia is a non-judicial state, meaning foreclosures do not have to be litigated. Uh, I repeat that again. Foreclosures does not have to be litigated. Uh, in Georgia, four weeks of advertisement in your local newspaper. The first Tuesday of every month, the foreclosures are possible between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. at your local courthouse steps, okay? So that's how foreclosures work in the state of Georgia. So they're gonna make that clear and, and pretty much that's it, right? Sign your documents, get your keys, become a homeowner and move on and live happily ever after. So that is the um, seven step process of buying a home. As I said, hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. Hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified when the second episode of this playlist comes out, which we're gonna be looking deeper into each of these steps. Um, so I kind of went deep on consultation. Uh, so the next video we're gonna be talking about is uh, obtaining financing, which will I'll go deeper in what are the qualifications to obtain the mortgage? Uh, what are some of the things you need to be worried about and doing and put in place now before you even apply? So that's gonna be the next video. Stay tuned for that one. Thank you for watching. And I invite you to go take a look at the channel too. Over a hundred videos uh, talking about living in Atlanta, Georgia and the Atlanta metropolitan area, meaning the suburbs. Uh, so you'll get to see uh, pros and cons of each different suburb that I've covered. You're gonna see some subdivision tours. You're gonna really get a good understanding as to um, some different areas here in the Atlanta metropolitan area. So if you're thinking about relocating to Atlanta, allow this channel to be a resource to you. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.